The objective of this practice is to properly adjust machine settings, strike the arc, manipulate the electrode, and read the puddle to make sound weld beads. For all job practices in this course, the necessary materials, equipment, and power source settings are listed in your workbook. For this exercise, they are as follows. Materials, 3 16 inch thick mild steel plates to form the workpieces and 1 8 inch diameter E6012 electrodes. For all job practices in this course, you will need the following equipment. A direct current power source, constant current type, protective clothing, gloves, safety glasses, and helmet, and a wire brush and chipping hammer. The machine settings for this exercise are direct current electrode negative or straight polarity and a current setting of approximately 105 to 110 amps. The six general procedure steps should be followed for all welding jobs. They are part of good work habits that will help maintain efficiency. The table surface must be free of spatter, slag, and dirt to assure good electrical contact with the workpiece. Arrange the wire brush, chipping hammer, and pliers in a handy but out-of-the-way place. Obtain the necessary protective clothing. Obtain the plates and electrodes called for by the job practice. Clamp the work lead to the table where it won't be in the way and set the course and find controls for correct current. Make sure the electrode holder is not grounded. If the holder contacts the work lead, it may be damaged in the resulting arc. And turn on the machine. When finished, always turn the power off at the machine, hang up the leads on the supports provided, and clean up the area. Set the machine for straight polarity, which means that the electrode lead is connected to the negative terminal. Some machines have a switch which controls polarity. Other machines may require changing the leads at the terminals. Adjust the current to 105 to 110 amps. This is an approximate setting obtained by turning the coarse and fine control to a closer range. For this machine, set the broad range at 77 to 150 amps with the fine control at about four. The final setting of the fine control is determined by the actual behavior of the arc while welding. A little experience will indicate the amount of current that produces the best results. Place the electrode in the holder. There are grooves for clamping the electrode at various angles. Start out with the right angle position. Try other angles later. The first step towards making a weld is striking an arc. It may be done by two methods. Scratching, which has a tendency to mar the work surface, and tapping, which is the preferred method. You should be aware that in striking an arc the first few times, you will be inclined to either pull back too far and let the arc go out, in which case, simply re-strike the arc. or you will hesitate too long and the electrode will stick to the plate. When this happens, use a quick twist of the wrist to break it loose. If the electrode still sticks, hold the plate with a gloved hand and bend the electrode back and forth until it breaks loose. Be careful not to ground the electrode holder or burn yourself. Scratching an arc is much like scratching a match. Hold the electrode at an angle and scratch the end across the surface of the plate. Withdraw quickly to establish the arc. To tap an arc, hold the electrode in a vertical position and tap the end of the plate in a bouncing motion. Withdraw quickly to produce an arc length two electrode diameters long. Make a number of buttons on the plate for practice in striking and maintaining an arc. 
the procedure, shown first without current, is as follows. Hold the electrode in a vertical position over the plate. Tap the end of the electrode on the plate and withdraw quickly to form an arc with a length of about two electrode diameters. Hold this length for about one second and then shorten it to about one electrode diameter. As the puddle of molten metal forms, move the tip of the electrode in a small circle to form the button. Break the arc with a quick twist of the wrist. Use the chipping hammer to remove the slag. After the plate is filled, call your instructor. The next step in learning to strike and control an arc is running a bead. A good bead will be even, smoothly rippled, and be about the width of two electrodes. There will be little spatter. Correct travel speed, current, and arc length will produce a continuous, crisp, frying sound. Too long an arc length will make a coarse, uneven, crackling sound. And the arc will often go out. Too short an arc length will result in a soft, buzzing sound. And the electrode will often stick. To make a bead, hold the electrode in a vertical position when viewed in the direction of travel. Viewed from the welder's position, lean the electrode 5 to 10 degrees in the direction of travel. Strike an arc near the edge of the plate. Hold the arc length to twice the electrode diameter and move to the edge. Shorten the arc length to about one electrode diameter and begin to travel. Travel at a speed sufficient to hold that same bead size for about three inches. Break the arc, allow the weld to cool, and then clean off the slag. Restrike the arc one half inch ahead of the crater, lengthen the arc to two diameters and move quickly to the crater while reducing the length to about one electrode diameter. Fill the crater to the bead size and resume travel. You should hear the crisp frying sound, the puddle should be smooth, and the molten metal should solidify to form even ripples as the electrode moves along. Repeat this procedure several times until the beads are even and smoothly rippled. Then call the instructor.